Good evening. Welcome to Lewiston City Council, regular meeting of Monday, October 27, 2014. We'll call this meeting to order. Uh, first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand while Pro Tem Johnson leads us in the pledge. Thank you. Well, it looks like we have a full house tonight. Uh, our next item on the agenda is citizen comments. This is an opportunity for citizens to address the council on agenda items or other items they wish to bring to the attention of the council. Uh, citizens are encouraged to discuss operational issues in advance with the city manager. Um, this is, we obviously have a big crowd because I think a lot of people want to testify about our potential third reading of the human rights ordinance. So I would ask that everybody exercise decorum and in consideration of others wishing to speak because we do have a full crowd. Please, please uh, try and limit your remarks to three minutes or so. Mr. Mayor. Councilor Blakey. Just a, a recommendation. I, I see we have still people out in the lobby out there. Maybe we can open that other door and maybe ask people to shove down a little bit so we can get everybody in. Okay. And there is still some seating up here. Okay. That being said, do we have any citizen comments this evening? Please come forward, name and address for the record. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm Mel Johnson, Emergency Management Director for the City of Lewiston and Nez Perce County. And my comments tonight are, are regarding the hazard mitigation plan, and this is part two of the revision that we do every five years to the hazard mitigation plan at the last City Council working session, we talked about the hazards uh, that are affecting us here in Lewiston and Nez Perce County. And of course, the number one one was uh, severe thunderstorms and flooding that comes out as a result of that. Uh, the hazard mitigation plan, we're looking for, with this uh, brief comment, we're looking for ideas and projects from the citizens as well as uh, departments in the uh, City of Lewiston as well as Council members ideas and projects to reduce the impact of disasters on the citizens of Lewiston. We have three received already from the Public Works Department. Uh, project number one is uh, stormwater basin improvements at Thane and 21st Street. Number two is drainage improvements for 14th Street and 12th Avenue. And the third one is drainage improvements on the streets at Miller Grade and Rigby Lane. And again, uh, if anybody has any ideas for projects that we can use to uh, apply for grants to get funding to reduce the impact of disasters, uh, please give me a call. Uh, my phone number is 799-3084, or the address is Emergency Management, P.O. Box 896, Lewiston, Idaho. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mel. Nancy McAllister, Clarkston, Washington. I would ask you to vote no in this discrimination bill, 4614. The CDC released a report in July of 2013 that said 1.6% adults identified themselves as homosexuals. If this resolution is passed, you will be infringing on the rights of the majority. It is not right that a private individual or a business or church would be forced to go against their beliefs. If passed, you would be discriminating against the majority. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Chris Hayes, 362 Reservoir Drive, Lewiston, Idaho. Uh, Councilman Randall had asked that we come by and introduce ourselves. Uh, I'm on my second year of my second term on the Lewiston Nespers County Airport Authority Board and was recently uh, elected as chairman of the board. Uh, the rest of the board will be uh, the same folks, but Mike uh, Martin will be acting as uh, second chair uh, as necessary. Uh, Pat Nuxel will stay as our treasurer. Verl Long uh, will stay as our secretary. And then uh, Bill McCann Jr. Uh, will still sit on the board as a member. 
Uh, with that, I also uh, asked Bruce uh, to attend as well. He's our new uh, airport authority, or I'm sorry, uh, our new airport manager. So without further ado, here's Bruce. Yes, good evening. Uh, Bruce McLaughlin, 2405 Sunset Drive. Uh, just wanted to uh, introduce myself as the new airport manager and say that I'm happy to be here in Lewiston. It's a great town. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Marsha Banta, 335 Syringa Court. I'm here as the president of the Lewiston Library Foundation, and I'm going to hand this off to the end here so you can pass it around while I'm talking. I just came to let you know that um, during this last month, I had the pleasure of going to Boise and attending a annual dinner for the Idaho Nonprofits Organization. And this year, for the first time ever, they did um, what they call Excellence Awards. There were 108 nominees for nonprofits throughout the state of Idaho, and of those 108 nominees, we were one of six organizations that were awarded the Excellence Award for Idaho. They were particularly impressed by, um, obviously, the new facility, but uh, more than that, they were impressed by the amount of time and energy and the uh, support that we got, not just from uh, large donors or small donors, but from all. We have almost 1,000 donors now. And the fact that we uh, also joined forces with the city council, I think the import there was an important piece of what we did was our uh, joining with the city council to provide funding for the first part of the uh, library. And um, I think they also were really impressed by the fact that we did things in a what was an innovative way for funding for public libraries. And the fact that we are going to continue to do that for the second floor. So I wanted to share this award with you. Uh, if you want to take a really close look at it, and for those of you in the audience, it's housed at the library on one of the shelves right by the checkout. Thank you. Thanks, Marcia. Good job. I'm Ryan Schwartz of uh, Cul-de-Sac, Idaho, and I'm uh, here for the ordinance uh, 64614. Um, I first want to start out, this is not a civil rights issue. Uh, Bernice King, uh, Martin Luther King's daughter, has, has said that, that she knows deep within, within that her father did not march and did not take a bullet for same-sex marriage. If you look in as far as discrimination, uh, state of Idaho, the Army, they discriminate. They do this for the common good. Blind people aren't able to get driver's license. If you look at the Army, you know, somebody that's handicapped, they're not, they don't, you know, they're not able to join. So this is, as far as discrimination, this is done for the common good. Also, um, a quote from the section, I'm reading section 30, 38.4. The pro, uh, pro, prohibited, uh, prohibited, prohibited discriminatory uh, acts, uh, quote, to, to unlawfully deny or discriminate against any person because of familiar status, sexual orientation, and or gender, gender ident identity slash exp uh, expression, the full enjoyment of any accommodation, advantage, facilities of uh, privileges over any public resort, accommodation, assemblage, or amusement. And so which, uh, quoting from this, is which, by the definition of the public resort, accommodation, assemblage, is, quote, public elevators, public washrooms, of buildings and structures. So, so this, uh, so you can have this situation. A full-grown person with anatomy of a man, and he's able, and so say you, I don't know if you have daughters, you know, that's why I'm here as far as, you know, I'm a father of a family, and that, you know, so you have this situation where a full grown person with anatomy of a man able to enter a, a public washroom with, you know, with a, with, uh, without any restriction. I don't, I mean, it, as far as, you know, city council, you're looking to protect you know your sit. You know your constituents. I mean, they, are you protecting their families? I mean, you, I mean, this really needs to be uh, uh, examined. 
And then uh, also, in this law, you're discriminating. If you look at it up in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, you have people up there that this case is, I mean, it's national news. You know, you're, by, by force, you're discriminating. Why do you want to force these people to, you know, to abide by this law? I mean, this, they're, in their conscience, they're doing what they, what, they're hold, what they hold is true. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am. Remember the part about decorum. Please let people speak. We don't need applause. Thank you. Mr. Cosby. Councilman. Address, please, for the record again. Uh, Chris Cosby, 3032 Cypress Street. Been out of town for a while and missed you guys. At any rate, I understand that uh, ADF sent you a legal brief on Ordinance 4614, uh, requested by a local resident who unfortunately was too cowardly to put his name on it. But if I'd known about it, I would have signed it because this ordinance must be stopped. Uh, <clears throat> before God and our community, this ordinance is wrong. The ADF and other organizations are aware of what's going on and watching for trouble that will come, that will come from this, like Coeur d'Alene, Houston, Texas. Is this what we need, national attention for Lewiston? I thought you said that this ordinance wouldn't harm anyone. Bring freedom. And yeah, we see people of faith and decency bullied, intimidated, fined, and run out of business using this very ordinance you say you're going to vote for. As the last gentleman stated, this ordinance allows uh, men to use females' restrooms. That means I can escort you ladies into the restroom if I like. All I have to do is say, gee, I think I'm a girl. High school boys to use the girls' shower room, is that okay with you? Because that's what your ordinance does. Vote this down for the sake of decency, or at least to keep the city of Lewiston out of the national attention. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cosby. Steve Coughlin, 631 Preston Avenue, Lewiston. Um, last month when I was here, I made it sound like uh, I didn't care for or love the gays and lesbians, which I do. I love each and every one of you out there and around the world. But this agenda that they want to pass tonight is totally wrong. And... Uh, We've had, we lived back east in Pennsylvania, New Jersey for 22 years, and we've had 13 years of bad experiences with lesbians. You wouldn't believe what we were accused of, what our kids were accused of, and when DIFUS and the police department is called, tax dollars are being spent over and over and over. Thousands of dollars went for a false claim by a lesbian, two of them. And this law that you're passing here tonight is going to be the same law that they have back there in Pennsylvania, New Jersey. I do love you dearly, but I'm against this law. Thank you. Thank you, sir. My name is Nathan Collins, 617 7th Avenue, Lewiston. Um, I didn't realize the police department was on the agenda tonight, and I just want to give them a plug. Thank you. They perform a vital, uh, vital service for our community and should be uh, respected and treated as such. Uh, my real purpose in being here, though, is um, <clears throat> I wanted to thank the council members for working hard to get the ordinance regarding the uh, use of uh, firearms and defensive uh, purposes on private property and uh, defense of life. <clears throat> I don't expect any opposition to the ordinance, um, but it's important enough to me that I was willing to rearrange my work schedule to make it here. I've been a resident of Lewiston for over 20 years, and in that time I've found it to be a wonderful location, a great city, a fab fantastic place to raise a family. 
But I've also um, had the experience of three home invasions um, where criminals either tried to force their way into my home or did make it into my home. Um, each of those times, um, although I, I do love the police department, they were not the ones that were able to uh, defend my home, it, it was me. Um, and the criminals understanding that I was in possession of a firearm and willing to use it, that um, ensured the safety of my family and got them off of my property. Um, obviously, I don't know what have ha would have happened to my family if I hadn't have been armed, but I do know what could have happened to my family if I had have used the firearm to protect us. Um, the vast majority of firearm self-defense cases uh, only require the presentation of a firearm. That's, if you pick up any NRA magazine or if you catch the headlines, you can see that most people don't have to fire a firearm. But on the off chance, that that does occur, I would hate to uh, be charged with a crime for protecting my family. <clears throat> so I'm urging the council to consider the innocent lives that may be uh, preserved and potentially damaged and destroyed uh, if this is not if this is not passed. Thank you once again for your hard work on the issue, and uh, I urge you to consider it carefully. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. John Stroop, 2911 Echo Hills Drive, Lewiston, Idaho. I am here to speak concerning the proposed ordinance 4614. I have read it through several times and I desire to share with you my concerns about such an ordinance. First, let me state that I appreciate your service to our city and the time that you give to lead us. Leading is not an easy job, but I know that you desire to lead with integrity and wisdom. And for this reason, I understand why you would consider this type of ordinance. All around us, there is conflict between various groups of people. Wars rage in various countries around us, and many for no other reason than differing philosophies or beliefs. As I watch conflicts unfold around me, I too consider how I might bring about some kind of resolve so that everyone could just get along. While we might believe that writing and upholding certain laws would make people get along, history reveals that this is simply not the case. Character and integrity are not produced by writing laws, but are developed in the crucible of conflict, especially the crucible of relationships. Anyone who has been a part of a team, lived with a home and family members, served in office, knows that conflict is a part of life. We do not all agree on everything, and that is really not all that bad. Disagreement, however, does not need to come to fist or wars, but it does test our character and willingness to live with others who might see the world differently. I understand wanting to protect people from discrimination based on personal choices, but we cannot do this simply by writing a law. Nor can we take away freedoms that are good for the whole community to protect the feelings or rights of the few. As humans, we must understand that each choice we make comes with certain unavoidable consequences. These may be positive or negative, but they should always be factored in when we make our choices. What does it say about us as a community if we cannot live with one another unless we're directed by law? There may be a certain publicly owned properties that have to be operated stricter because they're owned by the public. However, private businesses that are owned by individuals that serves the public is an entirely different matter. This is true regardless of your sexual orientation. If an openly homosexual couple owns a business and they do not want to serve me because I oppose their lifestyle choice, that's their right as business owners. Passing a law to keep them from doing this does not mean we automatically become a kinder, more accepting community. It simply means that we're obeying the law with no real guarantee of a kinder or, or character change or improved treatment of others. The same is true if the tables are turned. However, if I rent a property to someone, serve them as I, as I would any other customer who enters my store, or I provide a service to them even though we may disagree on what is an acceptable lifestyle, then we have shown that we are people of character and people of love, not law. If we decide not to serve each other equally, that is our right. And the customer must see this not only as the rights of the owner, but the consequences of his own choices. People who have tried entering a store without shoes or shirts have experienced this for years. Pet owners please, have as well. Please summarize, sir. Okay. No matter how much we may believe that this will bring us together, the truth is law can never accomplish acceptance. I encourage you to reject this law. 
as it will discriminate against those who hold different values. Thank you, sir. I'm going to um, not take three minutes. Again, I appreciate your... Um, <coughs> Name and address for the record, oh, I'm please. I'm sorry. I'm Nancy Coughlin. I live on Preston Avenue in the Orchards. And I'm going to speak on Ordinance 4614. And I appreciate the work that you guys do for the city of Lewiston, each one of you. And I just want to encourage you once again to vote no on this ordinance. And I agree with the gentleman that was just ahead of me. If I could have, I would have wrote that myself. So anyway, I appreciate your work and please vote no today. Thank you, ma'am. <coughs> Next. Uh, Alex Church, 727 Third Street. Um, I look at this not only as a civil right, and I think it has nothing to do with choice. I think it's a basic human right, and I hope you will adopt this ordinance. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hello, I'm Doug Trout, 1129 Linden Avenue, Lewiston. Um, I'm adamantly opposed to the ordinance 4614. Um, I want to echo the, uh, the, what the young gentleman said about having a daughter. I asked the council, what do I do? If I, I have a daughter, what do I do? I'm in a public place. She has to go to the restroom. Um, do I follow her in there to the girl's room? Do I uh, just tell her to hold it? You know, what do I do? I am not going to, if this passes, I can't let her go into a public restroom in this city. I'm sorry. Um, disappointed in those who are for this. I can't believe it's come this far in, in my community. When I first heard about this going on in other uh, states, I thought, well, hopefully it will never happen here, but now I see it is. Um, again, adamantly opposed to this. I hope that you reject this ordinance. I think it's silly and that uh, we need to protect our children, and I think they come first. Thank you, sir. Good evening, I'm Lois Hummel, 3522 9th Street, Lewiston. As for Ordinance 4614, I was not even aware of this until last week. I've lived here for six years. I had no idea this thing existed. I don't know when it came in or anything about it, so I went down and I got a copy and I spent the entire week going over this many, many, many times. Near as I can see, this is all pertaining to one group of people to the denial of others. There's also a phrase in here on page two that says, this chapter shall be deemed an exercise of the police power of the city. I had visions of a SWAT team and guns and a total takedown with this. I'm sorry. What? Those words are just a little over the top as far as I'm concerned. And I would agree with the other folks that have spoken. Wrong is wrong, right is right. This is wrong. Those are absolutes that have been so since the beginning of time and they will remain so till the end of time. I don't care how you try to change wrong, it's still the same. And wrong is never satisfied where it's at. It always wants more. It demands more. It will take you where you don't want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and make you pay till you die. There is one group of people that has been entirely left out of this. 
It has completely denied the rights of the citizens to conduct business according to their beliefs and how they want their business run. That's discrimination. Sorry, but it is. And I would really sincerely ask you to vote no on this because it's not going to stop with this. Once you open this can of worms, it's going to demand more. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. George Wank, 922 and a half London Avenue, Houston. I want to thank the mayor and council members for giving us this opportunity to speak. I know your job is difficult and appreciate your work you do. However, I have to speak against Ordinate 4614. As she mentioned, wrong is not going to be happy with what it gets. Back when they decriminalized the homosexual lifestyle, they were said, what do we care what they do in their bedroom? Not going to hurt anybody. Well, they weren't happy with that. They keep wanting more, as we're seeing now. I've had heard two reasons that society should accept gay relationships. That is love. We love each other. Why shouldn't they be allowed to do what they want? Well, then why not polygamous relationships? Why not adult teenager relationships? If love's all that matters, <coughs> why not those? Sounds preposterous, but why we're here now sounds preposterous too. They're born this way. Really? If you accept that argument, you also have to accept that pedophiles, rapists, alcoholics, and drug addicts were also born this way. If one form of sexual deviation is beyond the control of the person because they're born that way, you have to be willing to accept that argument for all other forms of sexual deviation. As others have already mentioned, if a man walks into a woman's restroom, exposes himself to young girls or even women, right now it's, it's indecent exposure at least, what would it be under this ordinance? Many people said we need to pass it because that's what Jesus would do. Jesus did hang out with the less of society and spoke with them, healed them, touched them, but he also left them saying, go and sin no more. You cannot say do what Jesus would do and leave out that last part. He always told them, don't sin anymore. And Jesus would not be for this ordinance. He absolutely would not support anything that would cause his people to be called criminals, people that were following his moral standards. The young lady that spoke last time about just wanting to be able to live her life, and if you don't want to shoot a gay wedding, don't. If you don't want to make a cake for a gay wedding, don't. Unfortunately, this ordinance removes that right to make that decision. This ordinance says you have to. To just don't would result, revol result in fines or re-education. One councilman is concerned some business would be paid by an outside organization or person to deliberately discriminate. The opposite is more likely to happen and has been happening. In these areas where the florists, cake decorators, t-shirt makers, and photographers have been forced to shoot gay weddings, there have been many other businesses of those same types that probably would have been happy to perform those services, but they targeted ones that they knew would not. They know that these businesses do not have the finances to fund these lawsuits. And as sure as you pass this, the ACLU will be here pulling down businesses because they don't have the money to fight this and they will either have to be re-educated or pay for a lawsuit or close their business. We are calling evil good and good evil. And this is not what our city or council or country needs. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Amy Canfield, I live at 917 7th Avenue. I am firmly in support of this ordinance. It's basic human rights. I've heard religion thrown around, and that's something that's chosen. I've heard race um, being compared, and that's something people are born with. We probably are never gonna agree on the idea that people are born this way. That is the side that I land on. This is just basic rights. Just don't discriminate, and I think that laws do have that opportunity to teach people. That's why we have laws, and they're okay for that. So just support this ordinance and stand true for these basic human rights. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Marlo Daly Galliano, 322 13th Avenue. I hadn't planned to speak today, but I feel compelled to. Um, I would vote, or I would encourage you to support this ordinance. I think that 
I'm speaking here as a mother. We've heard several people speaking as parents. I'm concerned about the equality for my children. I want them to grow up in a world where no one will judge them or no one will legally be able to discriminate against them. Those of you who have said that you are speaking in love, I have to ask you, have you ever loved someone who would be discriminated against by this ordinance? Because if you have, I don't understand how you can take that position. I feel this strongly, and I encourage you to support non-discrimination. Thank you. Hi, um, Clayton Yeager, 2037 Third Avenue. Um, I am also firmly in support of this ordinance. I feel that the ordinance allows you to stop disenfranchisement of an entire group of people, even if it is just a small subset of the population. Um, as a homosexual male in this city, I have not openly been discriminated against, which is lucky. I don't go out often. But I would have to say that it is kind of an odd feeling to go in public and think, oh, I might be kicked out of here, or I might not be allowed equal accommodation, or I shouldn't go in the bathroom at the bar because, you know, I, I am kind of gay, thus I might get punched, or I might be denied service. Um, I am a student at this college, I love it, and I don't plan to live here in the future. I have a career that I'm planning in software engineering. I'm going to be a great citizen wherever I do end up, but just I'm not going to live somewhere that doesn't allow me to have equal rights, even just if it's in public. Thank you. Thank you. It's a little tall for me. <clears throat> uh, Trey Turner, 4054 Fairway Drive. Um, I'm also here staunchly in favor of this ordinance. Uh, there's been a couple things that have been brought up that I think are relatively misleading as to what this ordinance actually does. Um, a, a gentleman mentioned a waste of tax dollars in, in Coeur d'Alene. Um, if you want to talk about a waste of tax dollars, Coeur d'Alene actually is a really good example because that issue is fabricated. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but the, the complaint was filed the same day that the phone call was, a 63-page brief. A lawyer doesn't just write that in one day. Um, they had changed their status about four months previously so that they can be... Originally, they were not a religious entity. Now, Coeur d'Alene is not going to prosecute them. They don't have a case because there are no damages. It's not an issue. If there's anything that's a waste of tax dollars, it's Coeur d'Alene having defended when they're not actually being fined or jailed. On the bathroom issue, the bathrooms, that threat of a man in the women's restroom, that is present today. If a man is, is dressed as a woman and goes into the restroom, that's a, that's a thing that you have to worry about today. There's nothing in this ordinance that makes that okay or changes that groundwork. That's exactly, if you're worried about that after this ordinance, you should be worried about that now. Um, and then to the police power uh, argument, there's nothing special about uh, police power, that's how a lot of the legislation is, is backed up. Um, that's kind of, if you look at other ordinances, that's what's in there. Um, I'm staunchly in support of this. This is not about special rights. This is about equal rights. There's nothing that puts anybody above. It puts everyone on an even playing field. And that's the kind of community that I want to live in and that I want our kids to grow up in and that I want everyone around me to, to live in. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Lily Reagan, 508th Avenue. I just wanted to say that I'm strongly in support of this ordinance as well. And that's it. Thank you. Um, my name is Santiago Hernandez. I live on 90, <coughs> sorry, 904 20th Street. Um, earlier this month, I went up to Moscow and I attended the coming out fair. And I saw a little button that said, we the people. That really kind of that really actually I like that comment because it actually means we the people not us and then you guys we are a community and we as a community to, in order to strive ahead of all the other communities around us not that it's a competition um, but we have to care for each other and in order to care we can't discriminate and we can't uh, not by saying by this ordinance passing it's not discriminating against a certain type of people you are still, it's not telling you that you are not allowed to have those beliefs. You are still able to have those beliefs. But we as a community have to treat each other with care. And so with that, I actually strongly um, am in favor of this ordinance. Thank you. Thank you.
I'm Colleen Mahoney, uh, 123 15th Avenue, Lewiston. I'm probably the oldest person to come before you who is in favor 100% of this ordinance. And I thank you so much for bringing it this far. It's difficult for any of us today to remember, even me, as old as I am, slavery. About 150 years ago, men could own and abuse and rape and destroy and sell slaves. At least 500,000 were killed in a war to determine that the Union would stand and no longer would man's in inhumanity to man be tolerated. So I'm going to forward from that to the women's suffrage movement, which my mom what, homesteaded her own ranch in 1917. She was brave, she was strong, she, her ranch proved up to be just as good as the man next door, but she could not vote. The men made the rules, the men made the laws, she couldn't vote. So what a happy day that was in her life in 1920 when the states ratified that. Okay, in 1942, I lived in uh, Minicasia area in Minidoka County, and the Japanese, it suddenly seemed, had always been discriminated against, but not to the point they were after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. They built a camp that was called a relocation camp close to my home, and I had the opportunity to meet some of the children incarcerated in that camp. It was not a camp for, it was a camp, a concentration camp. Guard dogs, guns on the corners, um, this discrimination and hate that went out toward those people and those children was just appalling to me. During the rights, civil rights era, when the blacks said, enough already, we're not going to ride the buses, we're going to march, in Montgomery, Alabama, my husband was there. And, um, and I remember, he remembered the, the beautiful black people who were marching rather than riding the buses and continuing to take the ugly, ugly discrimination that was fostered on them every day. How many of you remember seeing the children integrate the school in Little Rock? with all the nice people standing there throwing tomatoes and saying, uh, go back. We don't want you here, nigger. How many of you can remember that? I can, and it, it broke my heart then, and it breaks my heart now that we can still discriminate freely when we feel like it. It was a happy day, a happy, happy day in my life when the Civil Rights Act passed in 1964. Ma'am, ma could you please summarize? Sure, I will. Um, in 1990, the S Americans with Disabilities Act passed, passed so we no longer are, can discriminate legally against um, um, people who have disabilities. <coughs> I just want to tell you the experience of exclusion, prejudice, disrespect, and discrimination is always pain painful, devastating, and humiliating to those who are, re to those who are uh, on the receiving end of bigotry. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry I took so long. Hi, Amy Bond, 3634 18th Street E in Lewiston, and I'm strongly in favor of Ordinance 4614. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Diana Ames, 818 6th Avenue in Lewiston. I want to um, first of all thank the council and their subcommittee for investigating and doing the research that uh, developed this ordinance. And I want to speak in favor of it that this is an ordinance that, again, guarantees human rights, that is not, that is looking at the issues of things such as housing and employment, things that are so basic to any of us in our community, <clears throat> in the community. And I want to emphasize that um, as we were saying the pledge tonight, the last phrase really hit home to me uh, when we all pledged with liberty and justice for all. And liberty is another word for freedom. 
and what we're asking for in this ordinance in 4614 is to support the notion that people be free to live free of discrimination in this city, in this wonderful city, and that we look at this idea that uh, we need to get past uh, imposing our own personal or even our religious beliefs on this. We could survey this room and find a lot of very good religious people in here of several different religious persuasions, and we might find a lot of disagreement among those people uh, on some on some basic issues of the of those very of the same religion, so we can also acknowledge that a lot of harm has been done and is being done today in the world by people whose religious positions uh, force them into against other groups in their society. So I urge the council to move forward with this and to ensure that we have a community in which people are safe and secure with the knowledge that they can't lose their job, that they won't be homeless because of their sexual orientation or their gender identity. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, my name is David Knittel. I live at 712 6th Avenue. And I realize that there are a lot of different opinions here this evening. And um, there are going to be many people who don't like what I have to say. And so I would much rather quote from an eternal, holy, and loving God than to, um, and you can fight with him instead of fighting with me. And these are the words, and it says, professing themselves to become wise, they became fools and change the glory of an uncorruptible God into the image made like unto corruptible man, to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the cre creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever, amen. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. For even their women did change their natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, turned in their lust one to another, men with men, working with that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which is meat. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them, gave them over to a reprobate mind, to those things which are not convenient, being filled with unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, malicious, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. There is a holy God, and this is his holy word, and I urge you to vote against this ordinance. Thank you. I'm Rochelle Genthos. Um, I live at 2615 Country Club Drive. Um, I'm a new resident here in Lewiston. I just arrived within the last few months. And I'm very saddened to hear some of the comments that are being made here today. Um, I want to first say that I am strongly in support of passing this ordinance. Um, aside from the arguments of basic human rights, we all belong to groups that could be discriminated against. I've noticed that all, a lot of people are bringing up sexuality. We can all be discriminated against on our age, our gender, the way we look, the color of our skin. But this is basic human rights. We all deserve to be treated as individuals regardless of the, the categories that people can put, our, put us into. Um, as a new resident of Lewiston, I would like to think that I'm becoming part of a community that defines love as acceptance of all people without any exceptions. Thank you. Thank you.
My name is Tom Shoemaker. I'm at 1632 8th Avenue. I'd like to thank the council for bringing forward ordinance 4614. I am in favor of the ordinance. I would urge you all to vote in favor of this ordinance as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, Thomas Hennigan, 803 Prospect Avenue here in Lewiston. I'm here to speak in opposition to 4614. And in doing so, I too am going to focus on the issue of gender expression and the use of facilities for, provided for biological females by males who wish to transgender to female, transgender to female. And in doing so, I would like to cite uh, feminist author Sheila Jeffries from The Politics of the Toilet, a feminist response to the campaign to degender a woman's space, first available in Women's Studies International Forum, number 45, now available from her own website. And just briefly from the conclusion, Men who transgender have their campaign for access to women's toilets on the problem, hang, excuse me, base their pro on the problem of violence from other males in the men's facilities. Their apprehension, however well-founded it may be, is not a reason for enabling their entry into women's facilities. The specific needs of the interests of women, which led to the creation of women's toilets and remains valid concerns are ignored or ridiculed by theorists and activists who seek to degender the toilet. So this is a wide concern, and for the other uh, would-be attorney's sake, it is already of a concern to us. It is of an increased concern should this pass. I think that it is important to see that it's not just a concern of the right or of the religious, but of anybody who's concerned for the biological basis for the segregation of facilities. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. Mike Lorenz, 458 Crestline Circle Drive. Um, I guess my biggest question about this whole thing is how many of you people are, own your own business or you own rental property? Um, you know, I, I kind of look at it this way. I think. You know, most people, there's, you know, a lot of good people, and there's some real stinkers, and I don't care whether they're gay, straight, lesbian, whatever. But I guess I have a hard time when somebody tells me, you know, I have to accept this. I just soon accept it on my own terms and, you know, get along, and that's fine and dandy with me. It's, but it's kind of how we're wired. I guess, you know, we're just kind of imperfect species, but when we get into this local government telling me who I have to hire. I've talked to a lot of smaller businessmen and you know this whole issue with them is a moot point. You show up, do the job, treat my customers well, you know, you know your business. I have no problem with that. What do you have a problem is if I go to, you know, you got to terminate somebody or you kick them out of their apartment because they aren't paying the rent or whatever, well then it's like the burden falls on me or whoever else, you know, to say, well this is what happened. You know, and so you're already kind of got, you know, you're already behind eight ball over this thing. But I mean, this discrimination happens all the time. My daughter's a perfect example. An instructor at the local college, PhD in inorganic chemistry, wrote her online chemistry program. And then when she got emailed from the person that was in charge of it, they said, well, you can't teach this because you have three small children. And she teaches a class at LC. Well. Same thing happened to Lewiston School Board when one of the g women that was in there interviewed and one of the people on the school board said, well, do you think you can really do this because you have three small children? Well, I don't see anybody raising a big stink over these two instances, you know, but yet we're here, you know, talking about this and, and I guess we shouldn't even be here to begin with. I mean, because I think most people in this town are you know, a pretty good bunch of people. I think they're pretty tolerant, and but I think a lot of them don't like something shoved down their throat. And you can say, everybody got to right. Well, we all do, you know. I mean, we wouldn't be standing up here talking about this. And so I just think you really need to think this over and do what you think's best. Thank you.
My name is Kevin Kelly, uh, 1117 9th Street. I'm here to say that I'm in support of this ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. My name's Walter Phillips, 3724 10th Street E, Lewiston. And uh, I have three points that I would like to bring up on this. On a religious point, I live my life kind of like Romans 25 through 32. My point is, we're a nation of laws. We don't let religion dictate those laws. There's a separation between religion and the way the state runs. A lot of these people that are looking to marry now, they are winning cases after case against states for the simple fact they are not protected equally under the law. One thing on this ordinance that I would like some clarification on, though, is the expression slash expression. The identity, I can understand. All that, that's fine. But the expression. What, in your opinion, you need to answer this to me. You're my elected officials. You need to answer this question for me. What does it mean by slash expression? What are we going to have? I think you should table this and get some of these answers questions, some answers to these questions. There's a lot of concern on both sides. Before you pass something like this, make sure you get it right. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Amanda Hickel, uh, 2551. That's your address. <laughs> That's her address. Um, I live on Fifth Street in Lewiston Orchards. I just want to say that I am for this ordinance. Um, I, I will speak to the religion piece. Um, I am a Christian. I am also a lesbian of, of this state, of this town. Um, if God has an issue with me, it is between me and God, not, but not anything to do with the law. I have a right to be protected. Uh, my partner has a, white, has a right to be protected. We all have the same right. We need to be protected. So I am in favor of this ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Heather Hickel, and I'm living at uh, 2551 12th Avenue in Clarkston. And I would just like to say that I am in favor um, of everyone getting rights because even though I've heard a lot about children, um, I have a little boy. He's cared for a lot by my lesbian sister and her partner. And I don't think it's right that they should be discriminated at all. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Don Adams, 1632 8th Avenue Boulevard, Lewiston, Idaho. I am very much in favor of this ordinance. Um, some of the things I've heard tonight is bizarre. I mean, for me, personally, I went to Amsterdam and they have a bathroom. You go, guys go through this side, women go through this side, they meet, they wash their hands, they have booths. There's not an issue. You go into the bathroom, you do your job, be done with it. You know? This is just like fabrication of a bunch of craziness, as far as I'm concerned. You know? Discrimination is wrong, no matter who it is, what color you are, what race you are, what religion you are. Discrimination is wrong. We, the people, I vote. I pay taxes. I have the right, as well as you have the right, to be in this community and be protected by law. Somebody made the comment about the expenses that this would call for the law officers. Well, domestic partners, okay? Uh, domestic abuse is a problem for the police op officers. Okay, how far do we go before we give equal rights to everyone? Thank you. Thank you. 
My name is Jana Gomez. I live on Cedar Avenue in the Orchards, and I would encourage the council to pass this ordinance tonight. Hearing some of the hurtful and hateful comments tonight has made me sick to my stomach. This is my hometown. I was born here, raised here, had a family business here. And to know that there's so much hate in this town, it hurts. And it makes me sad that this is my home. I pray that the council would redeem my faith in this city by passing the ordinance tonight. And I say let God judge each of us at the end of our lives, but let the law protect us equally. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Kaylee Dry. I live at 557 Park Street in Lewiston. Civil rights are the rights of individuals to receive equal treatment and to be free from unfair treatment or discrimination. The United States Constitution says that no person shall be denied their civil rights. To discriminate means to distinguish, single out, or make a distinction. In everyday life, when faced with more than one option, we discriminate in arriving at almost every decision we make. But in the context of civil rights law, unlawful discrimination refers to unfair or unequal treatment of an individual. The Civil Rights Law or Act of 1964 states that discrimination based on race, color, religion, or national origin in a public establishment is prohibited. 50 years have gone by and people are still discriminating. What's it going to take to stop all discrimination? All love is equal. By discriminating against anyone, you're just being a bully. The intent of the ordinance is that all persons be treated fairly and equally. Imagine if a gay couple owned a business in town and refused service to heterosexuals. Heterosexuals would be outraged and would most likely involve the law for being discriminated against without thinking twice. Why is it such a big deal when the tables are turned? This world would just be a whole lot better if we just made the effort to be less horrible to one another. If we just took five minutes to recognize each other's beauty instead of attacking each other for our differences. In the wise words of Ellen Page, yes, I am young, but in my few years, I have learned that love, the beauty, the joy you experience, and even the pain of it, is the most incredible gift to give and to receive as a human being. We deserve to experience love fully, equally, without shame, without compromise, and without being discriminated, discriminated against for who we love. Harvey Milk once said, Worry about becoming a human being and not how you can prevent others from enjoying their lives because of your own inability to adjust to life. The Declaration of Independence says that all men are created equal. No matter how hard they try, they can never erase those words. That is what America, the land of the free, is all about. It comes down to the fact that we are all people. No matter our color, no matter our religion or what God we choose to believe in, no matter our gender, our disability, or our sexual orientation. We all bleed the same color, blood, and we all cry the same salty tears. Be fair to everyone, don't discriminate, and do as to others as you want done to you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Candace Martinez, 557 Park Street. Good evening. I'm here addressing you in support of the ordin ordinance prohibiting discrimination in housing, employment, and public accommodations based upon familiar status, sexual orientation, gender identity, expression, and I would like to add race and age. In the Constitution of the United States, Amendment 14 regarding civil rights, it states, all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the in jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of that state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall, ab which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of the citizens of the United States. Um, all citizens are entitled to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, despite any person's personal objections to the matter. Our government has repeatedly held that individual liberties must be protected no matter how repugnant some find the activities or individuals involved. For example, I read a comment stating some of us as individuals find abortion offensive to the most basic principles of mor morality, but that cannot control our decision. 
Our obligation is to define the liberty of all, not to mandate our own moral code. I am here today not just for the rights and protection of a minority, the LGBT, but for the rights and protection for all persons to be protected. I am compassionate towards any person that feels homosexuality is wrong because of your religious beliefs. I too have spiritual obligations. And that obligation is to be kind in my actions, respectful in my words, and not only tolerant to diversity, but acceptance of what I do not have control over. It is not my right, it is not my place to judge or condemn or discriminate because you or I claim to be Christian. Christianity shouldn't divide us. If anything, it should unite us. When I am in the presence of someone bathed in Christianity, I want to leave that person feeling as if Christianity humbled him or her. God shouldn't be a weapon, but a tool to enlightenment. Again, I would like to end this speech by saying, let's choose to live respectfully among each other with, dif with our differences, with dignity, grace, and peace. Thank you. John Michael, 1448 8th Street, uh, Lewiston. I guess, uh, I'm not sure where to begin. I used to live on the streets, and when I was out there over in Portland, uh, I was hanging out at this place called Sisters of the Road, and uh, it helps homeless folks. But anyway, this guy, big burly guy, tattoos everywhere, bald head, steps off his bike, and I said, hey man, uh, can I get a cigarette? Because I was in need of one. And he said, uh, <laughs> he says, I prefer that you use feminine pronouns, right? Which kind of took me off guard a little bit, but I was happy to comply. Um, I said, all right, darling. All right, sugar. Uh, can I get a cigarette? And uh, we ended up becoming pretty good friends. His uh, name was Brienne. I guess my point is, uh, <clears throat> as human beings, we get, to, uh, we get to define ourselves. We can say what we're like. Um, I'm going to see, speak from both sides of this because uh, uh, I think uh, this next century has to be about, as the Dalai Lama said, dialogue and compromise, okay? In the Judeo-Christian heritage, um, uh, for thousands and thousands of years, uh, the family unit has been considered sacred. And there's nothing wrong with that either, okay? So I think we have to see that, uh, well, I'll quote the Bible here. Uh, this is my favorite passage. It's out of Luke. It said, uh, God is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. So who are the ungrateful and the evil? Well, it's, it's all of us, okay? So we're called to be truly kind to each other and to understand the other side, okay? And I think... Uh, I'm not sure if I'm for or against this thing. I'm a small law guy, but I would like to say something in the defense of uh, Clint Daniels and Ryan Johnson, uh, the two uh, council members who were brave enough to say no, they didn't want this thing. Uh, uh, if you were worried about your personal liberties, uh, whether you're gay, straight, lesbian, or whatever, uh, these guys have your back, okay? I mean, that's what they're about. Um, they just happen to disagree with the law interfering with these things. And at a certain level, I am too. You know, this is a free country. We're free to make our own choices. We're free to be bigots. We're free to be cowards, bullies, whatever it is we are. But try to understand the other side's argument as best you can and find some humanity for both sides. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Mary Clellan, 32238 Street, Lewiston, Idaho. I beg you to vote against this amendment um, because two weeks ago I was in uh, Vancouver, Washington, went to a church there with my four-year-old granddaughter. She goes into the bathroom and I am not being racist or anything else, but there was a 
change gender man in the bathroom? Had she gone in there by herself, would she still be okay? What about my grandsons that are four to 18? Will they be safe if they go into the bathroom? Will they come out the same as they went in? Thank you. And I ask you to vote no. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Jeff Weiner, 1612 14th Avenue, Lewiston. Um, my issue tonight is not with uh, equal uh, opportunities for gays. That is not the issue for me. But I am support a number of people have brought up the bathrooms. I think you need some clarification on that. I think you need to rework that section. Um, you use your own terms, public washrooms, in the schools, in the library, at places of amusement, the movie theater, places where you eat, McDonald's. If I see my four-year-old daughter, who's no longer four, go into a rust, uh, the bathroom at McDonald's and some man follows her in there, I'm going to be following him. If I see uh, some man follow my wife into the restroom at the movie theater, I'm going to be following him because I don't know what his intentions are. And this talks about people that have actual or perceived sexual identity. I think you need to clarify that. My personal opinion is that uh, the laws of nature are not just for humans. The laws of nature are male, female. If you have those parts, use that bathroom, period. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Dan Lively, 2034 Grell Avenue. Thanks for the opportunity to come and speak today. <clears throat> and I would say this, I side with the Bible on this issue and consider it the final authority in opposing issue or opposing ordinance 4614. James 417 says, therefore to him who knows to do good and does not do it to him it is sin. I believe God's word, and I don't speak out against this ordinance. If I don't speak out against this ordinance, I believe that I'm sinning by not doing so. Leviticus 1822 says, you shall not lie with a man as a woman, for it is an abomination. The Bible is saying that homosexuality is a sin and therefore is not an acceptable lifestyle. Implementation of this ordinance goes against God's word, which is the Bible, and thus it is sinning against God. Jude 7, Justice Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which likewise indulged in sexual immorality and pursued unnatural desires, serve as an example by undergoing a punishment of eternal fire. The Bible is saying that there's consequences for sin. The word of God is clear. If we indulge in sexual immorality, pursue an unnatural desires, then we can expect to receive the wrath of God. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Jeannie Hickman Church, 727 Third Street, Lewiston, Idaho. I'm appalled by the people who have spoke tonight and used religion as a reason for this to be denied. These people, everybody in our town, in our state, in our country, deserve basic human rights. This is not an issue on religion. This is a basic right. Respect human decency. I 100% am in favor of this ordinance. I'm really proud of the council for bringing it forward. We shouldn't be talking about this issue in 2014. We should be beyond these kind of issues. Discri discrimination of any sort is wrong and it breaks my heart. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Bill Hall. I live at 1012 Prospect Avenue. Uh, I apologize for wearing the hat, but it's cold out there. I'm bald and I will not let go of my Seahawks. We, uh, by the way, this will be a minute and 50 seconds. I recommend it to all of you. <laughs> we gather tonight to enact Lewiston legislation that will include gay people 
among others, on the official list of which residents of this community uh, are to be protected against discrimination. The simple way to do this would not be a detailed list of people with diverse differences. The simple way would be to declare that all people in this community of all kinds should be guaranteed the same rights every day and every way. But let's not be naive. Even if this passes, there will always be a few uh, sneaky diehards who will find ways around this new law. Some will say they have uh, already rented the apartment or already filled that job, wh whether they have or not. And there are even a few folks uh, from yesteryear who don't want a close association in their businesses, their social lives with Mormons, Muslims, or Catholics, and God forbid anyone should have to associate with a Unitarian or a Republican. If this measure passes tonight, it will please most of us who live here, but like many such declarations, it will leak a bit. Nonetheless, maybe this will eventually help us to come to like each other better. Bear in mind, this legal statement is far more a heartfelt declaration of support of all God's children than it is a tough enforcement device. Granted, we have only recently experienced another proposed attempt at fairness for those who have been excluded until now. Uh, some of our city councilors are proposing that more people in this community be allowed to house chickens on their property. Uh, I'm finding it difficult to understand how some of the same members of our council are willing to make chickens feel more welcome here than they do the gay people. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, my name is John L. McCoy and I live at 1018 11th Street. I don't know how I got in line behind Bill. Um, <laughs> I would just like to say that I am strongly in support of this ordinance. I feel that the people that I see, the people that I work with, the people that I try to serve in my own work, which is at the YWCA, I should be forward in saying, are really those who would benefit. And in opening up this what I feel is, I suppose, a housing and employment ordinance. We're just ensuring that people who might be discriminated against for something that, although I definitely don't believe it is a choice, you may think is a choice, but they're going to be going into an interview not having to worry about whether that one factor about themselves, which won't actually affect the work that they do, the quality of the work that they serve, is a matter of their potential hiring or not. I think it's a matter of practicality, and I think that it's high time to have this ordinance. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Stephanie Keene, and I live at 401 4th Street in Lewiston. Um, I am strongly in favor of this ordinance. Um, I don't think that people should have the right to evict others just based on their sexuality. Um, I would hate to think that I would be evicted from my house because I have purple hair. Um, I know that's not the same thing, but it kind of is along the same lines. Um, and as far as the religion piece um, and people quoting the Bible and saying it is sovereign, it also says don't eat shellfish and don't wear blended clothing and don't trim your beards. I think it's interesting that you pick and choose which scriptures to follow. Anyway, thanks. Thank you. Uh, my name is Shelley Cordova. I live at 557 Park Street, Idaho. Uh, tonight here excuse, at LCC. Excuse me. Could you say your name again, please? Shyla Cordova. Thank you. Tonight here at LCSC in Lewiston, I as well, as all you stood together, united, pledging our allegiance to the flag, and this we pledge liberty and justice for all. As I stood here with you all, I pledge liberty to all liberty is the state of being free liberty stands for all you person to be granted fundamental or basic <coughs> rights in the united states natural law is the integra integration of history secular reason and divine inspiration we not as we not just as humans people but as citizens of the united states are entitled to life <clears throat> liberty and the pursuit of happiness the, um, despite any person's personal objectives per Personal objectives to the matter. 
So I strongly agree that you guys vote yes. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, well, seeing no takers, uh, we'll move on to our uh, public hearings and presentations. We have one this evening. This is public hearing ZA. Oh, before I even get going, thank you everybody for taking the time out of your lives to come here and talk to the council. Okay, I, I truly believe that it's part of the process and uh, you know, I've been writing everybody's names down. I know a lot of the councilors have been making comments and writing them down. So but we do appreciate the input. So thank you again, everybody, for showing up. Okay, back to the public hearing. <clears throat> ZA01-14, this is amending the zoning code definition of the term public use. Mr. Bennett. Oh, I think uh, this is Joel? Mr. Plascon's here, and he'll be here in just a moment to um, talk about this change to the code. Those of you that are interested in some mundane matters as uh, definitions and stuff, this apparently is a little clarification on a special planning area in the Normal Hill zone. Mr. Plaskin, glad you could join us this evening. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I was waiting out in the lobby for this time to come. Um, so this is an advertised public hearing on a zoning code amendment. Um, initially began um, a couple of years ago when we enacted the new Normal Hill North and Normal Hill South zones and the council had exempted at that time from the new zoning districts um, public facilities and asked the Planning and Zoning Commission um, specifically with regard to schools uh, to revisit zoning for schools in, in Normal Hill as it related to the new Normal Hill North and South zones. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission did that. Um, the result of that review by them was that they decided that leaving schools zoned as they had been previously, in other words prior to the new Normal Hill North and South zones, um, was just a fine idea and nothing additionally needed to be pursued relative to zoning for schools. However, in the process of that review, um, what was considered a discrepancy in the zoning code was identified. Um, you've got materials in your packets um, that include the definition, the zoning code definition of the term public use. Uh, you've also got, um, as one example, um, a zoning district where you can see that the term school is listed as a use by right. That's in the R1 zone is in this example. Um, and then public use is listed as a conditional use. Um, so the discrepancy um, was thought to be in that schools are included in the definition of public use. So in one place then you see schools by right and then right below it you see it's under public use. If it's a public use it requires a conditional use permit. And so we set out to resolve that discrepancy. Um, the method uh, prescribed to, to resolve that was to change the definition of public use, um, to eliminate the reference to school district property from the definition. Um, so the Planning and Zoning Commission held a public hearing on that uh, proposal and recommended approval, uh, forwarded it to the council. Now though, since that time, uh, upon further review at the staff level, um, it appears the code amendment 
may not be necessary and may in fact create yet another problem. Um, if you look at the definition of the term public use, it doesn't say school, it says property owned by the school district. And so that wasn't the intent um, to allow every use that a school district could have uh, by right in all the residential zones. For example, the bus garage or administrative office facilities. Uh, and the definition change that's being proposed um, would, as it turns out, allow those types of facilities by right in residential zones. And that wasn't the original intent and is probably not the most appropriate thing to do. Um, also upon further review then, um, we thought that since a school um, is a more specific type of public facility, it is within the category of public use, and it's listed by right, then it's listed by right. Anything f under the current definition, anything other than an actual school that the school district would propose to do is a public use and would require the, the, the conditional use permit, such as the bus garage or the administrative office facilities. And so I'm not sure if that's completely clear to you um, the way I've tried to explain it, but um, because of that, um, it appears that the code amendment that uh, was advertised for hearing tonight um, should probably not be pursued, but that's up to you. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Councilor Randall. I make a motion to table this until they can come back with a more definitive definition. You want to table to a certain date or? Oh. Mr. Plaskin. Could, could I just ask for some clarification um, uh, on the motion in terms of uh, what is meant by a more definitive de <coughs> well, definition? Your, your uh, explanation of where buildings other than mm -hmm. actual school instructional buildings uh, should be separated somehow and so that they're protected by the the different R levels, and whereas the other buildings aren't. Okay. So what, what I so what come I'm, up with a definition for us. Okay. What I'm trying to say is that the existing definition does actually work the way that it it is written, um, and that there is not a discrepancy in in the code. That's my suggestion to you at this point in time but so if what you're saying is public use covers all buildings except for the instructional buildings. no it covers those it covers those as well okay I withdraw my motion okay So by the striking, I guess my question, Joel, public use means structure or use intended. I'm, you know, I'm looking at the underlined and the strikeouts here. Mm -hmm. So this is the definition that you're okay with? Public purpose. Yeah, my recommendation to you at this, city. my recommendation at this point in time would simply be to not pursue any change to the code relative to this, this matter. I can bring this back to the Planning and Zoning Commission um, and have them confirm that, that they agree with that. Um, but I think had they known the information that I brought to you tonight, they would not have recommended doing the code change. Okay. So we can still have a public hearing and then we can vote on whether to accept or... Sure. Okay. Is everybody clear on that? A late, another public, a later public hearing. If it's required? Yeah. Okay, I think I've followed what you're proposing, <coughs> what we can keep and what we can not adopt, so. Okay. Any other questions for Joel? Okay, at this time we'll go ahead and open this public hearing. Is there anybody that wishes to speak for or against public hearing to amend the zone code zoning code definition of the term public use as applies to the normal hill zones inclusive of the r1 r2 r2a r3 and r4 zones
Opposed? Against? For? Okay, seeing none, we'll go ahead and close this public hearing. And, uh, counselors, I guess I'd entertain it. Is there any further questions of Joel at this time? I guess I'd entertain a motion to approve or deny ZA 01 14. Okay. Council Randall. I make a motion that uh, we deny the changing of the definition of public use. Okay. Second. You have a motion in a second? Okay. Is everybody clear on that? Basically, things stay the status quo. Is there any further discussion? Those in favor of denial of ZA 01 14, say aye. 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 Four. Four. <coughs> okay. Motion carries six to one. Okay, thank you, everybody. Back to my original here. Okay, now moving on to the consent agenda. I'll entertain a motion to read the consent agenda. Is there anybody that wishes to pull anything from the consent agenda? Jay, Mr. Mayor. I would That's like right. to move items I and J to the active agenda. Since I don't feel it's appropriate to have a first reading of an ordinance in the consent agenda, Okay, so I will become G on the active, and J will become H on the active. Is that correct? Okay, anything else? Okay, motion's been made to read the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 to 0. Approving the minutes of the September 8th, 2014 regular meeting and the September 15th, 2014 work session. Accepting the minutes of the June 18th, 2014 Parks and Recreation Commission and the October 8th, 2014 Youth Advisory Commission. Approving resolution 2014-61 by title only. A resolution approving a contract for engineering services between the City of Lewiston and Idaho Municipal Corporation and JUB Engineers Incorporated at Idaho Company for engineering services for the Basin 7 Stormwater Master Plan update and providing an effective date. Approving resolution 2014-64 by title only. A resolution accepting and approving a dedication of right-of-way from Winco Foods LLC to the City of Lewiston and providing an effective date. Approving resolution 2014-65 by title only. A resolution accepting and approving two easements from Winco Foods LLC and providing an effective date. Approving resolution 2014-66 by title only. A resolution accepting and approving a dedication of right-of-way from St. Joseph Regional Medical Center Incorporated to the City of Lewiston and providing an effective date. Approving the Mill Hollands Addition Administrative Plat, a subdivision containing two residential lots located in the 200 block of 11th Avenue. Approving the Red Rock Center Administrative Plat, the subdivision of two commercial lots on a 14.84 acre parcel at 2981 Thane Grade. Approving the bid award for liquid deicer to Roadwise Incorporated of Maple Valley, Washington in the amount of $142.50 per ton. Approving the purchase of 21 Panasonic Toughbook computers from CDWG in the amount of $78,867.41 by utilizing the WSCA contract through the State of Idaho's Participating Addendum 1064. And approving the vouchers payable dated September 26, 2014 through October 9, 2014 in the amount of $1,746,946.19. Okay, counselors, the consent agenda has been read. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. Is read? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Motion carries seven to zero. Okay, now on to the active agenda. 
Uh, we have the potential third reading and adoption of Ordinance 4614, enacting a new section of the city code to be codified as Chapter 38, Sections 1 through 7, prohibiting discrimination in housing, employment, and public accommodations based on familial status, sexual orientation, and or gender identity expression. I'll entertain a motion to read for the third time Ordinance 4614 by title only, suspending the rules. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Well, discussion. Councilor Randall. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that the vote for this be by roll call. Okay. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to have the vote be recorded by roll call. Discussion? Those in favor say, oh, Councilor Danny. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, I don't think you need a motion for that. You already had an existing motion on the floor. I think he's can simply ask for it. Okay. And and you're required to do so. We'll put it on that. Okay. Thank you. So we have any discussion? <laughs> well, I. This is just we don't. To read. The ordinance. Oh, to read. Okay. All those in favor of reading Ordinance 4614 for the third time, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay. Motion carries five to two. Approving the third reading of Ordinance 4614 by title only, suspending the rules. An ordinance of the City of Lewiston enacting a new section to the Lewiston City Code to be codified as Chapter 38, Sections 1 through 7, <coughs> prohibiting discrimination in housing, employment, and public accommodations based upon familial status, sexual orientation, and or gender identity expression and providing an effective date. Okay, Councilors, Ordinance 4614 has been read for the third time. I'll entertain a motion to adopt Ordinance 4614. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Now, discussion. Councilor Dan. As normal, I'll go first. I'll start off with the same thing I've said each time. If you take the emotion out of this ordinance and you look at it from a, a purely government taking action to fix a problem, you should be able to list where the problem is. What businesses in the city of Lewiston are actually discriminating? Whereas if you take the emotion out and you just look at it from we're here to solve problems, what business is actually discriminating? I mean, even in the beginning of the ordinance, it even starts off with, the city of Lewiston has found. Well, where are those findings? I, I would really like to know what businesses are discriminating, so I, I don't go there. I would I would really like to know. Thank you. Certainly. I'll get it all out. All, yeah, no, all you're, right. you're good. All right, so one of the comments tonight, or several of the comments, was the current law isn't sufficient. Um, that somehow the law doesn't protect members of the LGBT community. That's false. If you are assaulted, the police will investigate it. If you are, if there's an act of fraud committed against you, the police will investigate it. If you want to open up a business, you can. If you want to get married, you can. You want to join the military, you can. In fact, there's no institutional barriers left for the LGBT community. And to insinuate otherwise, I, I think is false. I, you haven't been able to actually list businesses that are actually discriminating in the city of Lewiston. And the next issue, of course, was people talking about it's a human rights issue, it's a human rights issue. There's no greater human right than your right to your own life and the right to your own actions. The, the concept of liberty is not using coercion to take somebody else's property or force them to provide a service. In fact, the whole concept of, of liberty is the, the absence of coercion specifically the coercion from government. So I'll be voting no. Mr. Mayor. Council Randall. Uh, <clears throat> Councilor uh, Daniel says that they haven't heard anything as far as what businesses have discriminated. On the other hand, we haven't heard anything from the Chamber of Commerce or the Realtors Association, 
or any other large group that represents business in this city saying that they're deadly against it for whatever reason, whether it's biblical or economic, doesn't matter. But there has nothing been said by any large group, and that includes, as far as I know, any large group. We haven't had a cardinal walk in the door and say the Catholic Church is dead set against it. So I'm, I really have a reservations about that kind of argument at all. And I do agree that we should try to keep the church separated from it as part of, as part of our uh, Constitution. That the church doesn't set the edicts for the government. And so I just, um, one lady talked about several occasions of different discriminations that have gone throughout our history, such as one of them being women at one time were not allowed to own property. The reason being is if you're a property owner, you're the ones that were allowed to vote. And believe it or not, one of the reasons that you could vote down south, if you owned a slave but no property, you could vote because they were property. So, I mean, discrimination has been coming around through the United States in a lot of different ways. And we've been working through it bit by bit. And I think this is one of them, too. And so I'll have to vote yes. Thank you. Vote time, Johnson. Mr. Mayor, thank you. I, I still think that this ordinance infringes on our basic civil liberties. And any time that we're going to pass something in a law, as responsible representatives, we need to have evidence. And for over, for months and months and months, for over six months, and as many people that have testified here tonight, there hasn't been one single business, one single business owner that has presented any evidence of discrimination in the city of Lewiston. So why should we pass this ordinance? Furthermore, I want to ask the question, if, if we have a male suspect who's apprehended by the city police department and transported over to our county jail, which is within the city limits of the city of Lewiston, and they are moved into the, uh, the male, the male prisoner is, is identifies themselves as a female, are we going to, uh, how are we going to handle that in terms of uh, dealing with the county? Are we going to allow them to discriminate by not allowing that person who identifies as a female to be <clears throat> included in the uh, female population in the jail? Can you answer that? <laughs> I can take a shot at it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. What happens inside of a criminal institution, and particularly inside of the county's jail, is really not something we have any jurisdiction over. How they assign their uh, housing for their population is how they assign housing for their population. And it really, this ordinance doesn't uh, prevent them from doing that. It's an entirely different kind of system that any more than if we had a correctional institution located within the city limits, we could tell the Department of Corrections how they had to house people. That's kind of a separate and distinct um, organizational level that this ordinance doesn't prevent them from doing what, because there are issues that only they see in terms of either housing uh, particular areas or safety or whatever they are. They, those are the criteria that they use and this, this ordinance won't prevent them from continuing to do that. So we're going to allow them to discriminate. No, Councilor. Uh, Daniel. Daniel. That's actually a good question. So from what the city attorney is saying is we're going to allow our officers to actively take part either directly or indirectly in the discrimination process. In fact, in the ordinance, it says that that's banned. And so if our officers are turning over somebody who is legally a male but identifies as a female, and they, the officers know that they're going to be discriminated against in the, in, in, by the county, they're actively participating in discrimination. 
Yeah, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, it's not the responsibility of our offers once they turn them over to the, the county to the as jurors. how they're housed. I mean, we just don't have any jurisdiction over how, how they perform that. It's a different level of government. You know, we can't tell the state or the county how they uh, organize or, or um, their institutions. Okay. Councilor Blakey. I'm not a big reality TV show person, but there's several uh, of these uh, prison shows on TV now, Orange versus Black and all these different ones, and it seems like a lot of prisons have figured that out. They seem to interview a lot of the inmates, and, and, uh, and there's some gender identity going on, and at least at the, at the penitentiary level, they seem to have figured that issue out, and I suspect that at our local police level, we can get advice when it's necessary. Council Blakey. But I would like to address another, if I may, or would you prefer to no, call certainly. somebody else? Okay. Great testimony tonight, folks. Open government works, and it's working here in Lewiston. This is what we need. There's a lot of input from everybody. I heard different, obviously we all heard all different positions on, on this subject matter. I took some notes, took some statistics, wrote down some numbers, and it's interesting. I, I heard some folks today say it's only such a small minority of the population. Well, 50% of the folks that spoke tonight spoke in favor of that, of, of the ordinance. That was roughly 22, 23 people spoke in favor of that tonight, more than just a small percentage of 1 or 2% of the population. But I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again, and Michael Renz brought up a very important point tonight. He talked about an incident in his family where he has a daughter who he perceives has been discriminated against because of having children out there and didn't get a job. Okay, I said this before and I'm going to say this again and I'll say it again down the road. This is only the beginning. When we make changes to an ordinance like this, this is just the beginning. We don't know what's in front of us. There's going to be other things that we don't even have identified yet that we will someday maybe bring into this ordinance. Again, Mr. Lorenz brings up the situation of a child who possibly was discriminated against and would fall under maybe one of these categories, maybe under sex, but maybe not. The fact that they got a child, who's to say that down the road that may not be an issue that someday we addressed where an employer said, I won't hire you because uh, you can't give me 100% of your time. Well, I'm just saying someday that may be there. I said before, and I'll say it again, who's to say somewhere down the road that public ex expression isn't the next big issue to discuss? Someone who tattoos something on their face and they're denied employment. That's coming down the road. Some of years we'll be discussing that. That'll be another topic. And thank goodness that we live in a nation that allows open discussion like this and allows polarity I didn't pronounce that word right. I apologize, plurality. Help me with my speech impediment there. PL Plural sounds. Plurality. Thank you. Thank goodness that we live in a society that allows this open discussion. Mr. Mayor. Further discussion? Councilor Miller-Dow. Uh, I would like to make an amendment to the ordinance. Uh, for section 38.5, I handed you all a paper at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, 38.5 subsection B subsection 4 it currently really reads two religious organizations or entities controlled by religious organizations including places of worship my proposed amendment would change that to say to the religious activities of any church synagogue mosque temple or other house of worship or other place used primarily for religious activities and ordained priests or ministers of any denomination engaged in such activities. I think this adds uh, more of a definition to what was already there and provides uh, more protection for folks and their religious liberties. Council, clear on the proposed amendment? Councilor Daniel. Did it, was there a second? Sorry. Oh, do we have a second? I would second it. Okay. Councilor Daniel. I'll support the amendment. You know, I, I, I'm against this ordinance regardless, but it, there's many exceptions that we can get in there, the better. Um, I, I do got to point out the hypocrisy of it, though. I, and I, though I do support, I, I do think religious liberty is, is vitally important. It's interesting that we'll protect a church, just not the people that go to the church. 
Just following suit with what the Supreme Court said, Counselor. Okay, so we clear on the amendment. Further discussion? Yes. Councilor Blakey? Um, I will vote for the amendment. I think it further it further expands definition, which is important, which I believe is important. I do want to point out, though, um, I did a little exercise last week. It is awful easy to become ordained, and I know that we have the wording in there, and I, I will I will leave it in there. But uh, for eight dollars and ninety nine cents, I could have gone on last online last week and became an ordained minister, um, and and uh, done weddings and funerals. But I found it interesting, the church that I joined, um, in their bylaws, did, did condone and permitted um, and encouraged uh, same-sex marriages. So uh, of the church, I did become an ordained minister for. But for eight, I did not buy the certificate, so I don't have that for my wall. My point is, it's awful easy to skirt laws and get around laws anytime you want to work at it. Okay. Further discussion? Those in favor of the amendment, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries seven to zero. Okay. Mr. Mr. Mayor. Council Randall. I'd like to propose an amendment to section 38.6, part A, under penalties. I gave you uh, each a copy of that. What I propose is to insert on, on line A, uh, a violation of this chapter is a misdemeanor, comma, punishable by, and insert the words, a fine of not more than, and then further says $1,000, and mark out fine, and or, and insert not more than, six months in jail or both. The reason I went that route is it follows the Idaho State Code, which is 50-302, and that's the way it's worded. Okay. So. Second. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Everybody understand the change in language? So this gives a, this gives a lot more flexibility. It isn't just a flat $1,000 or six months. It can be more, more, less than a thousand, or less than six months. Okay. You okay with that, Mr. Mayor? Members of the council, I think that's a correct interpretation of what would be allowed for, for Idaho code. Correct. And there are a number of codes that read that exact same language. Okay. So everybody understand the proposed language. Okay. Those in favor of the amendment, say aye. 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 Opposed. That motion carries seven to zero. Pro Tem Johnson. Mr. Mayor, on that same section, actually uh, 38.6C, where it says any person who falsely reports a violation of this chapter may be charged with a crime, I'd like to propose striking may and replacing it with will. Second. Okay, hold on, I'm getting lost here. <coughs> I don't have a problem with that. Um, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, whether or not somebody gets charged with a crime, this jurisdiction lies within uh, the purview of the police department and the prosecutor's office. And, um, constitutionally, I don't know that you can take away the prosecutors right to, to determine whether or not a crime is charged um, I think you have in here that <clears throat> that the person can be charged under this ordinance for a false report that I'm not sure the City Council can require a prosecutor or a police department or a police yeah, officer to, to file a charge there are lots of circumstances that go into it there may be a situation where um, it looks like there's false evidence, but you may not false um, information, but you may not have enough evidence to go forward with it, and that's it, that makes it difficult. Um, okay. I mean, certainly, history has shown in similar kinds of ordinances, particularly like domestic violence ordinances, where false reports are made, 
there are charges brought for those kinds of things. So there's a history in the in law enforcement for trying to enforce these kinds of provisions, but I don't think you can force somebody to do it. Okay. Councilor Blakey. By changing that word, does, is there a chance that we're also trampling on people's rights of uh, saying that you're innocent until proven guilty? If by putting the word can in there, are we implying that you're guilty and now you have to prove yourself innocent? Yeah. Councilor Blake, that would be one way that you could look at it. I, I, also, I also, the question I ask is, by putting can in there, are we now um, nullifying one's Miranda rights? I'm sorry, could you say that again? By putting can in there, I could stand up. Uh, are we nullifying one's Miranda rights? Mm. Okay. Miranda only applies if you're in custody and being interrogated. Pro tem. Mr. Mayor, I mean, this clearly says uh, charged with a crime, not convicted with a crime. So, and it, it also says falsely reports, which would be fraudulent. But, I mean, if, if the lawyer says it's unconstitutional, then I'll withdraw my motion. Okay, so we're back to discussion. Further discussion? Had two amendments made. We have heard a lot of testimony tonight. We've been hearing testimony over the last three weeks. I'd agree with Councilor Blakey. I think the, the uh, testimony's been pretty well split down the middle from everybody that we've heard here. And uh, this is a tough issue. I still believe by approving this, I don't think we have trampled on anybody's civil rights. I think uh, we make ourselves look like a more inclusive community. And uh, so I'm gonna support it. Councilor Daniel. I wanna propose an amendment to section 38.5 ex exceptions number five. It read, businesses, when the product or service will be used for ceremonial purposes against the business's owner's deeply held religious beliefs. Second. He's adding it. To repeat that. It'll read businesses when the product or service will be used for ceremonial purposes against the business owner's deeply held rel religious beliefs. Okay, we have. What's that? We have motion and a second. Discussion? Councilor Maldonado. Point of order. Um, oh. I'm the original motion maker. I get to state the case first. Okay. So the reason for my motion is we've heard stories in the, in the paper, national TV, about the florist that's forced to um, provide flowers to a, um, an LGBT wedding or the cake maker. It's one thing to say that First of all, I'm against the ordinance regardless. But it's one thing if you want to make the case that, you know, an innkeeper shouldn't be able to discriminate because essentially all they're doing, they're ringing on a register, they get them the room. Same thing with a restaurant or any other place that's a business. However, when you're forcing someone to take part in a ceremony that oftentimes is religious, I think I would rather, I'd rather be on the side of too much religious liberty on, on that issue than too little. So, so like I said, it's geared towards people who would be forced to take part in a religious ceremony that they would, that they're opposed to. Council Mel and Do you also have a definition of religion? Because as far as I'm concerned, I can make up a religion and say I'm not going to make a cake for you because of X religion. Oh, I'm, I asked him if he had a definition for religion because I was wondering if I could make up a religion and then say I am not going to make a cake or take your pictures for your wedding for X reason because of my deeply held religious belief that may be non-existent, but I get to make it up. I got a good answer for that. <coughs> okay, hang on. Let's, Councilor Blakey. Oh, my question was, I, I'm just wondering if, if the answer to your question doesn't already lie within the amendment that we just approved earlier for the further uh, explanation of, of religious and what and what can what what is a religious entity is that already defining what you're trying to get to i think the um first let me answer count oh sorry mr mayor well that was good 
being double barreled. Well, he was, RJ was kind of holding his hand up. I, I just Pro wanted tip. to uh, refute what Councillor Maldonado was saying. I believe the courts have already decided what a correct definition of religion is. It's, it's gone up to the Supreme Court. It's been hashed out over and over. It's pretty obvious. Councillor Daniel. Councillor Maldonado, also the, the the amendment that you literally just made a few minutes ago also reference two religious organizations. So I would, I would just ask the same question. How would you define it? Because you literally just made a similar amendment. Now, once again, uh, Councillor Blakey, I, I, I forget your whole question, but essentially this would ap apply to private businesses like florists and photographers, cake makers, um, anybody who potentially on a regular basis is involved um, in a large part in ceremonies, oftentimes religious ones. Councilor Blakey. I guess may I ask one of the what if questions then? Where does that start and where does that end? Could that person under their religious, using that, using what you're saying, could they, could they then extend that, extend that, um, Two other races, two other, two other folks. Could it be extended beyond that? Could it be could it be used to discriminate against uh, just a male or female in general? My most confident moment was following my dream when I'm me, looking fabulous, rocking my bro. Ten bucks. Ten bucks, <laughs> Councillor <laughs> Collins. I thought for a second there we we're going to hear Martin Luther King's speech, but no. You don't believe it. You don't believe that you're, you, it could be used in other, any other format to punish uh, any other class of people. No, because this this only applies to this ordinance. That's why it's an ex it's an exception to this ordinance. And that's it. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Pro tem. I agree with the amendment, and I think that you know this ordinance pushes people into involuntary servitude. But what's even worse is when you try to control people's speech, forcing someone into a ceremony or to conduct a ceremony that they don't agree with is totally against the, the First Amendment. And we have court cases where, you know, even though we all got up and said the Pledge of Allegiance, we still have the liberty someone could not say the Pledge of Allegiance if they don't want to. Why should we force someone just because they have a for-profit business into conducting a ceremony if it's against their core beliefs? Well, I, I guess I'm going to go out on a limb, and there's, you know, we've referenced the Civil Rights Act of 1964. I mean, if people had held, held uh, strong beliefs about uh, performing ceremonies for people of color. What's different now? Certainly. I don't think anyone's being forced to conduct that type of ceremony. You under this under this ordinance, you would be forcing someone to conduct a ceremony. If if someone wants to get married, that's fine. It's legal under the state of Idaho. They can go to the courthouse and get married. But why should I? If you're if you're a pastor, should should you be forced to do that ceremony if you don't want to? You're, they're specifically excluded under this ordinance. Right. Council Mel Meldonado. I'm also pretty sure, certain that it's already illegal to discriminate based on race and gender. Um, which would be a colored wedding or a African-American what have you wedding. Sorry. Yep. Oh my goodness. Uh, sorry. It is already illegal to discriminate against somebody based upon their race. So you are, I guess, forced to perform that wedding. You can't discriminate because that person is black or Hispanic or what have you, which is exactly what this ordinance would be doing. Again, making it just equal for everybody. Councilor Blakey. I'm comfortable with the fact that the churches are protected. Years ago, a pastor friend of mine who is no longer in the Valley, he's a church in Vancouver, Washington, would tell me some of the more interesting stories uh, that pastors run into and some of the requests that you get for weddings. And some of them are quite different. Like, I would like to bring my horse to the wedding. Could we please have a motorcycle? Can we have the motorcycle up in front of the church? Um, can we wear bathing suits? And you laugh at that, but those have been requests that past, this pastor has heard over the years. And he has said no to those requests. And I am comfortable with the language in our document here that the church is protected 
from doing something that the pastor, the priest, is not comfortable doing in his church based on the beliefs of his church or his denomination. And I don't think we're forcing anything down. We're not forcing anything down the throat of a church. RJ is bringing up the point, I believe, that in private practice, in private business, we could. And I'm not going to say that might not happen. That's the risk of doing, that's the risk of becoming a private business owner. When you're a private business owner, you don't get to choose who you want to do business with. You may not accept a job as a contractor. Sure, you may not have to accept a job. But if I run a business and I'm selling hot dogs, I don't get the right to say no who I sell my hot dogs to. Now, if you're rowdy and rudy and, and crude, those are different, those are different grounds. But, excuse me. What I meant there was, as an individual, I can pick and choose the jobs I want if I choose. I don't have to go out and get bids. I don't have to show up. And in, in some way, I may be approaching grounds I have no business talking about right now. But again, as a private business person, I, there are times, and yes, you may be forced to have to make a decision that you're uncomfortable with, but that's, that's, that's business. Pastor Daniel, I just want to bring back the point. The point of my amendment isn't a part of that. It's, it's addressing people who own private businesses that are normally, whose businesses, would, their product or their service would be used in a ceremonial purpose, oftentimes a religious one. So, Councilor Blakey, since you like a lot of the what-if scenarios, sure. um, by the way this is written, you could have an, an instance where a member of the LGBT community is getting married. They go to a, a priest and they say, we want to get married. The priest says, I don't have to on this ordinance. I'm exempt, thanks to Councilor Maldonado's exception. So they say, OK, I'll, I'll go somewhere else. So they, they have a private one with a ordained minister from one of the online sites that, that you visited. But then they're able to force a florist into participating in the same ceremony that the priest was able to say he wanted, he wanted no part of. How is that, how is the priest more important from the religious florist? That's why, that's, if you're talking about equality and treating everyone equally, we just passed an exception to one group, but not the other. <coughs> the leaders of the church, but not the church goers. That's the point of my exception. I guess I would offer that if I was a florist, regardless of you know, what I think about the ordinance, if I'm a florist, I'm a business, I've got the doors open, somebody comes in, they want a couple hundred dollars worth of flowers, I'm selling the flowers. And I don't care what they look like. I mean, that's what the doors are open for. I'm there to make money so I can pay the rent and pay my employees. So, you know, I, I, I'm just, I'm, I guess I'm having a tough time with that, with that argument. You know, whether it's cakes, photos, I mean, if you're in business, you're there to make money. I mean, I, I don't know how else to put it, so. Mr. Mayor, and Council, there's a difference between the regulation of commerce and those things that are protected under the First Amendment. Commerce is not protected under the First Amendment. It's probably the most highly regulated field in the, in the law. So it's, this is just a difference between re religion, which is protected by the First Amendment, and co commerce, which is not okay. legally. Mr. Mayor, I call the question. Okay, we have a motion to call the question on the amendment. Second. We have a second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, Opposed? Calling the question. I'm sorry. Oh, what, what are we for the question. <laughs> in debate. Okay. Yes. In debate. in debate. He called for the question. Aye. We have a show of hands. Yeah. Aye. Motion carries five to two. Okay. Back to the amendment. Amendment. Those in favor of the amendment proposed could read, by... Could we read the amendment again, please? You have a better copy of it than me. Just turn over my <laughs> Okay. The amendment would read, to businesses when their involvement would, be, would mean providing goods or services for some ceremonial purposes against 
the business owner's deeply held religious beliefs. Okay, we're clear on that. Those in favor of the amendment say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. 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 Okay. Yeah, show of hands. At five to two. Yeah. Which one we for against? Well, for the against. Okay. Okay. Five to two. Okay, back to Ordinance forty six fourteen. Further discussion. Council Maldonado. I just want to point out some things that we heard during citizen comments and then I'm definitely ready to take a vote on this and I imagine everybody else sitting out here is ready as well. Uh, some folks named some cities, specifically Coeur d'Alene. I too can name cities, Boise, Moscow, Pocatello, Victor, Ketchum, Sandpoint, and Idaho Falls. Those are the seven out of the eight cities in Idaho that have not had any problems after passing this ordinance. Um, uh, bathroom, that was a popular one. Uh, at the risk of causing some folks to hyperventilate, there are currently transgender folks using the bathroom with you and your children today. So sorry about that. Uh, I think you'd be much better off having them do what they're doing now than have a woman with male anatomy go into the male restroom. That's going to cause them a lot more stress than it will if we just pass this ordinance. Um, and guess what? People go to the bathroom to use the bathroom, and then they leave. And the last comment I have is the rights of the majority. My question would be, what right is that? The answer I would assume is the right to discriminate, and that is exactly why I proposed this ordinance. Thank you. Further discussion? Councilor Daniel. First of all, Councilor Maldonado, shame on you. When you have citizens come here and share their concerns, whether you agree with them or not, you don't turn to them and just laugh at them and make some snarky comment about it. That's not appropriate. That's all I have to say. Okay. Further discussion? Councilor Collins. Mr. Mayor, uh, first, my apologies for the uh, <laughs> sound. Uh, this was a, a, honestly, a very challenging topic for me. I know about a year ago at this time, this was brought up through a, one of the public forums with uh, debates amongst the counselors, and I was either fortunate or unfortunate to be asked this question first, and I responded at, at the time that, depending on the writing, I would support this ordinance. Um, in that period of time, I've had a lot of time to think about it, a lot of time to discuss it um, with my family, with people that I trust, um, with clergy, with a lot of people. And in the end, it, it came down to this. And, and, and I will say this, I am a Christian. I do um, believe in God. I do believe in Jesus Christ. And, but I don't believe that ordinance is a factor in that part of my life. Uh, in my mind, this is an ordinance about the rights of individuals and the right to be treated uh, equally and fairly. Um, I have written down, do what is right. Uh, in this case here, and in my opinion, um, doing what is right is to pass this ordinance. Thank you. Councilor Daniel? You gotta make one more comment, since I know this, this meeting, even though I've said this at each and every meeting, I think it's important, I realize this is the meeting that people look back on minutes and whatnot, is I'm against discrimination. I just believe in in America, you should have the right to associate with who you want or not to. Thank you. Pro Tem? So may I agree with Councillor Daniel's comments, and I also want to point out that at the beginning of this whole process, Councillor Daniel and I brought up a proclamation to where we would put out that we, as citizens of Lewiston and the City Council, oppose discrimination in all forms and that was rejected by this council. I just disagree with the heavy-handed uh, coercive nature of all of this and it's just, uh, you know, it's turning turning us into government bullies, so. Okay, further comments? Well, I'll back up Councilor Collins because I've talked to quite a few folks and I've had people call me up that were dead set against this, you know, I'll be honest, and I've, but I've been polite and listened to their concerns. Um, you know, talking with my wife and family and a mutual friend who is a pastor at one of the local churches, and it's kind of a non-denominational church, so you'd kind of expect that's the side that they would come down on. Nobody was got, got real biblical or anything like that. Um, I guess I just, you know, all my years of Catholic upbringing, Catholic schools, and all-boy Catholic high school, I guess I missed the part where Jesus said we weren't all equal. We should be all equal, and we should be treated equally, 
and that's why I support this. I just don't see this as being a heavy-handed intrusion into government, or government into people's personal lives. And when you can have a ordinance like this pass in Idaho Falls and Pocatello, even though it was upheld, it was there was a referendum, and it was still upheld by the will of the voters. And we're talking some real bastions of deeply held religious views, southeastern Idaho. To me, that says something. You know, we're a lot more diverse up here, people. And uh, I've lived down there, so I, <laughs> I can tell you. So I'm, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just, I'm voting for it because I think it's the right thing to do for our community. And that's, that's it. I'll, you know, wherever the chips fall, I'll uh, support this. That being said, any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor of approving ordinance 4614, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay, motion carries five to two. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for the testimony, for sticking around. Thank you, Council for the discussion. I think we should probably take a brief five minute recess to let the room clear out and some of us can go use the facility.
Okay, welcome back, everybody. Uh, once again, before we continue with the rest of the active agenda, thanks again for everybody, their participation in a long and testimony-filled meeting. Uh, moving on, we have item B, which is Ordinance 4615, possible third reading and adoption. This is amending city code section 35-32-4, increasing the speed limit on a section of Old Spiral Highway from 25 miles per hour to 35 miles per hour. Entertain a motion to read Ordinance 4615 for the third time. So moved. Second. By title only, suspending the rules. Same motion. Okay. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 to 0. Approving the third reading of Ordinance 4615 by title only, suspending the rules. An ordinance of the City of Lewiston amending Lewiston City Code Section 35 32 4. Increasing the speed limit on a section of Old Spiral Highway from 25 miles per hour to 35 miles per hour and providing an effective date. Okay, Councilors, Ordinance 4615 has been read for the third time. I'll entertain a motion to approve Ordinance, ordinance 4615. So moved. Mm -hmm. Motion has been made and seconded. Or we have a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Councilor Blakey. This is a little bit related. Um, just to point out, I believe that this change will take place in part of the property that's considered in the area of impact. And that, and that came up in discussion at the uh, county zoning meeting last Monday night when some folks got up and spoke spoke that uh, that piece of property should not be included, that section of land should not be included in the uh, area of impact. And um, the uh, it was approved that it was included by the county commissioners, but I believe this is this is that that little island of land that we that we put back in after there was discussion the about removing. Seven acres. Yeah, it was discussion after it was removing. So just pointing it out. Actually, I believe that's to the it's city limits to the county line is what we're talking about. And the chief can or Mr. Davies. Mayor, that is correct. It's just from the city limits down to the old spiral highway. Thank you. All right. So and is it this, is 35 above that. So does that, but my question is, 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 is some of this in that area of impact? My understanding is the area of city impact is outside the city limits. This is all within the oh, city limits. Thank you for correcting me. Thank you. Okay. Okay, those in favor of further discussion? Those in favor of approving Ordinance 4615, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 to 0. Uh, next up, Resolution 2014-63. This is approving a contract for engineering services, services between the City and Horrocks Engineers, Inc. for engineering services for the Snake River Avenue project from Southway Bridge to 11th Avenue. I entertain a motion to read resolution 2014, or is this to approve? Approve, approve resolution. Approve. Yes, approve. 2014-63. Thank you. By title only, suspending the rules. So moved. There's an Second. Rule that applies to titles for resolution. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for keeping me on track. Uh, is there any discussion? I'm sorry. Yes. Who moved and seconded? I moved. Second. Thank you. Yes, Councilor Randall. I think we, a few years ago, had a little discussion about this. There were some people upset about the roundabout, and they were under the impression that this section of road that we're discussing tonight was included in that project. And uh, what I'd like to know is the funding. Where is the money coming from? Uh, how much are we putting up? Has this money already been set aside previously? It just hasn't been used. This is for the design phase. Mr. Davies, could you come down? Mayor and City Council, this project is has been approved through the STIP process and also through the city process. The amount of money that's funded is, or the project is estimated to be about one, a little over $1 million. Our share of it would be the 
typical at the federal level, which would be 7.34% or $77,000 when it's all said and done. That includes design and construction at this point. Um, at this, um, I gotta read this because it's been a while since I've looked at it. We are, we are going through the design phase. The money currently is in the budget for the uh, our, our share of the design of it, which is set at $160,000. So we'd pay our 7.34% of that. So what's that, roughly $12,000, somewhere in there. Um, so that's in the budget. When it comes for construction, that money has not been set aside and it has not been budgeted at this point until we get to actually a design year or a construction year. And at that point, council will again see a, an agreement between the state and the city for final construction. Is everybody clear on that? For design right now. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of resolution 2014-63 say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 to 0. Okay, next up, resolution 2014-59. This is approving a collective bargaining agreement between the city and the Fraternal Order of Police, Lewis Clark Lodge 10, for three years, commencing October 1, 2014. Mr. Bennett, you want to introduce this? Yes, thank you, Mayor and members of the Council. Um, this is uh, the most recent uh, negotiation session for labor negotiations that the city has uh, undergone with one of the three labor unions represented here, uh, representing employees of the city of Lewiston. This is the police union, the fraternal order of police. Um, uh, the last agreement was a three-year agreement uh, that expires or expired on September 30th of this year. Uh, the following agreement, as the mayor said, would be for an additional three-year period. Uh, this followed a um, number of months of negotiation with uh, both the uh, employees of the local of uh, the Fraternal Order of Police and uh, representatives from the parent organization um, in Portland. Uh, we believe that this is a very uh, fair agreement. Uh, the negotiations went very smoothly. Uh, there are not a lot of changes to the uh, agreement from the previous agreement. Um, the uh, monetary issues are um, uh, basically a 2.5% cost of living increase. Uh, and that's for each year of the contract. Uh, other than that, there are no other significant uh, remuneration clauses within the ordinance, no significant changes to the language. Um, the police department, um, I will remind the council, uh, you know, has done a really great job in the past of m managing their budget and their personnel and of finding, always being the department that could be counted on to find ways to save money uh, when they have been asked to help out with the city budget. A number of years ago, when the city was in a real financial bind, it was the police department that stepped up and volunteered to take less uh, in order to help balance the budget. Um, so uh, I don't think we have any uh, complaints with how, how we have been treated and how we are treating the uh, Fraternal Order of Police and our police department. You heard one individual come up tonight uh, to talk about uh, you know, his uh, appreciation of the police department and the job that they do. So um, we think that the process has gone very smoothly and very fairly and we would recommend that the council adopt resolution 2014-59 and set into place the new collective bargaining agreement for the next three years. Thank you. Okay, counselors, I'll uh, entertain a motion to approve resolution 2014-55. So moved. Or 59, sorry. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Mr. Mayor. Council Randall. Well, I take exception to the contract on the overtime, uh, what the way they use to calculate the overtime, they use days that aren't worked, like sick leave, and to calculate the, the overtime. That, we already had a discussion on about that and did away with that with the exempt employees. I think that should follow through throughout the entire city. Um, then the other one I have a problem with is 
every year out of the three years. That to me is just a spiraling increase. It uh, compounds like compound interest in a bank. Um, so, I mean, if we're going to do some, if we're going to do any increases, we'll just keep it to the CPI. And my experience in the private industry is usually in a three-year contract, your first year, there is no increase. Maybe if there's money in the coffers, they'll give you a, a signing bonus but there is no change in your salary. So um, so I have a, other than that, I have no problems with the police contract, but those two things have, have really bothered me. So I'd have to vote no against the contract just for those reasons. Okay. Further discussion, Councilor Blakey? Looking down the road, we have the uh, fireman's discussion coming up, contract will, will be coming up and discussing that in the, uh, springtime, I believe. Am I correct, Mr. Bennett? It'll probably be in the late spring, yes. Late spring, okay. Um, I would encourage somebody, um, I'm careful making a recommendation like this. I may end up volunteering myself, and that's not the intent here. But um, probably one of us should have been involved. We talked about it. We talked about it in the springtime being involved with negotiation. We, we talked about should they be open to the public, should one of us attend, and and as I, I believe none of us made any of the negotiation meetings, I, I could be wrong in saying that, but I don't think any of us made it there. Shame on me, shame on any of us, maybe not, maybe not shame on anybody. But going forward, I could see where we might want to have a place at the table, at least for discussion and observation. And so I, I would encourage when it comes time for the firemen's that um, we place one of us or some of us at the table to, to really to address some of the concerns that Jed has, because the same issues he's talking there will be coming up with, in the fireman's discussion. So I think we should have somebody there. Okay. No, I would say, you know, Councilor uh, Randall does have a point, and I think you have a point also, and, and maybe that is something you need to take a look at. In, in the meantime, we've had a management team sit down with the with the uh, union negotiating team, and that's what these people are paid to do, is to come up with an agreement. This is what they presented to us, so I'll go ahead and support it, but looking forward, maybe there's some things we can do. Any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor of Resolution 2014-59 say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Motion carries six to one. Okay, next up, Resolution 2014-67. This is an approving an agreement which amends the 2007 agreement for the maintenance and operation of the Jackson Baldwin Falls between the city and Jackson's Pay It Forward Foundation. Mr. Mr. Ben. Barker is going to address that. Okay. I oh, need Councilor Blakey. Yes, I need to point out that I have a working relationship. I work with Scott Baldwin. His wife is uh, a, a chair of the foundation and uh, I have a working relation with Scott Baldwin. I do not believe my relationship will interfere with my vote on this issue, but I wanted to point that out. Okay. Council have a problem with Councilor Blakey participating in the vote? Okay, thank you for the disclosure. Mr. Barker. Mayor, City Council, thanks for inviting me up here. Um, the Jackson Pay It Forward Foundation put together um, this project back in 2007. Uh, it was very much a heavily community involved project. Uh, we valued it total around about $320,000 worth of work that's been added to this community. Uh, something, uh, Scott Baldwin is here as well representing the foundation if you have any additional questions with him. Uh, basically what we're looking at doing is changing the agreement so then the city now would be in charge of ongoing routine maintenance regarding the fountain itself. Uh, landscaping and um, regular cleaning of the site would still be a community-driven project uh, through Scott and then also through uh, community volunteer groups as well. Okay. What's the effect on the budget, Mr. Berker? Uh, effect on budget, what we're looking at is uh, 
Obviously, um, annual costs we're looking at, currently the uh, Red Lion does cover all water costs. It's tied into their uh, pool <coughs> pump house. Uh, there's not a separate meter that tells us what the annual cost would be because it's rolled into what their current functions are at that site. Uh, as far as utilities go, uh, utilities average between about $3,000 and $3,200 the last few years. Uh, the original agreement stated that the city would pay the first $2,000 and then following that it would be split 50-50 between the foundation and the city. And then once it reached 4000 then the foundation was responsible, but we haven't hit that point. So the net effect on us is 600 bucks? It's very minimal. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Barker? If I could just add one more piece. Obviously, uh, we wouldn't be looking toward disagreement if we didn't feel like we were um, set to take over the responsibility. We do feel it, it enhances and s continues to fit in with what we've done uh, between Locomotive Park and the hillside there that we already maintain, the lower portion of it. Uh, we have an, a licensed electrician, plumber, and landscape architect on site as well. So. Uh, we feel like, especially after seeing Scott try and punt his way through work in the system, uh, it may be in better hands now. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Those in favor of approving Resolution 2014-67, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, 7-0. to zero. Thank you, Mr. Barker. Thank you, Mr. Baldwin. All right, next up, vouchers payable, 926.14 through 10.914, the amount of, oh, to Albertsons, the amount of $14.33. I'll entertain a motion to approve vouchers payable to Albertsons with Councilor Daniel abstaining. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries six to zero with Councilor Daniel abstaining. <laughs> Okay, next up is uh, Ordinance 4616, first reading. Uh, this is amending City Code Section 31-85D, providing for the renaming of streets by resolution. I'll entertain a motion to read Ordinance 4616 for the first time by title only, suspending the rules. So moved. Second. Okay, discussion. Council Randall? Um, I just wanted the folks to know that currently it's done by ordinance, so that that's what we're just asking to change from ordinance to resolution on okay. that. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion? All those, all those in favor of reading Ordinance 4616 for the first time say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 to 0. Approving the first reading of Ordinance 4616 by mm -hmm. title only. Mm -hmm. An ordinance of the City of Lewiston amending Lewiston City Code Section 31-85D, providing for the naming of streets by resolution and providing an effective date. Okay. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, next up is uh, Ordinance 4619, possible first reading. Amending City Code Section 24-1, providing for an exception to discharging firearms if in defense of persons or property. I'll entertain a motion to read for the first time Ordinance 4619 by title only, suspending the rules. So moved. Second. A okay, motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Just a quick clarification on my agenda item here. It lists item title Ordinance number 4629 on the front, and it says 4619 on the second page. Is that a? Yeah. That's on the new. Uh, that's on our new agenda, right? The ordinance number is correct. It was wrong okay. on the It was wrong on the right. Thank you. Okay. Well clear on that? Okay. Those in favor of reading ordinance 4619 for the first time, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 to 0. Approving the first reading of ordinance 4619 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Lewiston amending Lewiston City Code section 24-1 providing for an exception to discharging firearms if in defense of persons or property and providing an effective date. 
Okay, well that concludes our active agenda. Moving on to unfinished and new business. City Council comments. Do we have any Council comments this evening? Councilor Daniel. Don't forget to vote. <laughs> and that would be next Tuesday. Okay, thank you. Or until Friday. Mm -hmm. Oh, Friday at the courthouse. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was also on my list of comments. Any other comments? Um, oh, just one. I know we had a gentleman come down here and uh, talk, but uh, I wanted to congratulate Chris Hayes and his new position as chair of the Joint Airport Authority. And uh, he's looking forward to taking on the extra responsibility and everything I've heard is he's been doing a pretty swell job up there. So, and to thank Mr. McCann for his years as the chair. Uh, the other thing was, uh, I don't know who in the room or is watching, had the opportunity to go downtown on Saturday. I got there a little late, but they had the downtown Pumpkin Palooza. And um, Beach was there from Parks and Rec, and he he swore there was a good 3,500 to 4,000 people down there early in the afternoon. It was packed. Um, by the time I got there, there still was quite a crowd, um, but it looked like it was really well attended. They were still rolling pumpkins down the hill. Everybody had a really good time. It was a beautiful day. So next year, if you have the opportunity, it's one of their biggest events, from what I understand. So. Uh, the little girl that was dancing to the music in this chicken suit, and she couldn't have been that tall, was hilarious. Anyways, that put a smile on my face. And to back up Councilor Daniel's comment, please everybody take the time to vote, whether you do it down the courthouse before Friday, or make sure you get to the polls on uh, next Tuesday. Um, it's not only a right, I think it's an obligation to vote. Councilor Maldonado. I had an opportunity to, I went down and helped to decorate for Winter Spirit uh, down at Locomotive Park and the rest of the counselors have never done it. It's actually a pretty fun little thing. You get a tree and you drive by it and you recognize that that's your tree. Um, so it's a fun little experience. They're doing it, they start at 9 a.m. every Saturday and then the lighting is November 22nd. So if you have an opportunity or anybody else watching or in the audience, it's a good, good, nice thing to do. Okay. Any other comments? I guess the last one, I, again, I'd just like to reiterate, I appreciate everybody's participation in the meetings over the last few weeks, and uh, we'll move forward and we'll see what happens. Mr. Bennett, any city manager comments? Just a few, Mayor. Um, a couple of reminders, November 3rd will be our next work session. We'll be talking about sidewalk construction and about the bicycle plan. Uh, we'll also, and then on Saturday, November 8th, uh, that will be the actual Veterans Day Parade at 11-11 uh, downtown. It won't be on Veterans Day, which is Tuesday the 11th. So uh, be there for the uh, Veterans Parade on the 8th. Uh, the 10th is our council meeting. And then the 11th will be a holiday. That's the actual ob observation of Veterans Day. And the last thing I would note is that uh, the Public Works Department is one of the few departments in the country that has received an accreditation from the American Public Works Association. Uh, that accreditation is coming due again uh, soon, and uh, the folks from APWA will be down in Lewiston again to, to check on our progress to see how we're doing as we uh, apply again uh, for accreditation uh, for our department. So uh, hats off to our Public Works Department because they're in uh, a very elite category. Thank you. Uh, advisory board and commission appointments. Do we have any appointments this evening? I know Mr. we're still. Yes, no, Councilor Randall. We have Mr. Black retired. Uh, that was on the Solid Waste Commission. So we have three vacancies on the Solid Waste Commission. Okay. And anybody wishing to join that commission can contact Kerry at City Hall. Any others? I might be mistaken, but I have an email here for the Emergency Services Advisory Board Commission. Are we going to? Yes. Is, is that an appointment we have, we did that somebody it. wants to I, make? I haven't received the paperwork on it. Right okay. Now. I know that we had somebody coming up. I was waiting on that. So. Okay. okay. We'll keep us posted and we can make an appointment. Okay. Uh, future work session agenda topics. Do we have any other pressing needs people want to discuss? I think if anything comes up, we can probably squeeze it into the next Monday's meeting, so. 
Okay, well with that, we will call this meeting adjourned. Thank you everyone.